Hey kitties, it's me, Retro Dad. Today we're going to talk about collecting for the Game Boy with the Lookout 4. We'll talk about that and more after this. If you want more gaming and collecting content, don't forget to subscribe to stay in the know. I love the NES because it's one of my childhood system, my favorite console. I love the Game Boy almost just as much. Mainly, one, the games are fun. Two, the variety that's on the Game Boy. There's over 500 licensed games for the original Game Boy. There's platformers and a lot of them. There's shooters, running gun style like Operation C. There's also space shooters like Nemesis or its sequel, Gradius Interstellar Assault. Arcade ports like Pac-Man and The Misses board games like Monopoly, licensed games like Batman the Animated Series, fighting games like Street Fighter 2, and much more. Some of our favorite characters appear on the Game Boy, like Mario and Six Golden Coins, Mega Man, and Link from Zelda, Billy and Jimmy from Double Dragon, and can't forget Samus from Metroid. Well, it's time for a fresh recourse. What exactly is Game Boy games? DMG stands for Dot Matrix Game. These are the original Game Boy games and they are labeled as such. You will notice it says DMG. That stands for Dot Matrix Game. Unlike the NES, which has a region lockout chip, the Game Boy is region free. So you can play games from Japan and other countries. Yes. The Game Boy is region free. On a Game Boy car or game pack, you'll have its region listed. Here's an example, DMG SS USA. Solar Striker. This is the NTSC release. This is a European game, DMG SC UKV, Solomon's Club. Let's talk about Game Boy boxes. These are actually harder to get than, let's say, an NES box. You're more likely to bump into an NES box versus a Game Boy box. Now, I don't collect a lot of Game Boy boxes. I bump into quite a bit and I've walked by them over years. You know, getting loose carts for Game Boy is a lot easier than getting boxes. Occasionally, I do pick up boxes here and there. I think I'm only about eight or 10 of them. And just because you have a Game Boy box and you might have a game inside does not mean you have the manual. Like this is just the box and cart only it does not have the manual for this. In some games that are not that expensive on the Game Boy, like Black Bass, the boxes might be more. So always do your due diligence and do your research. So getting a box, just like the NES, you gotta look for rips, you gotta look for tears, you know, creases. Here. Inside so have my glasses on, if you notice, there's a little bit of a difference. So one thing about getting, let's say, Game Boy boxes, there's gonna be high sought after ones like Link's Awakening. Now this is the player's choice version. This has shot up a lot in the last, I say, year. Probably due to the Switch release. I think I got this for 10 bucks, the box, the cart, and I had the manual somewhere else. I'm not picky usually when it comes to boxes. Some collectors are, but if they're a decent looking box, I'll pick it up. I've had this box for many, many, many years. This one definitely did not have when I was a kid. Um, I had the original Zelda, but not this one. Just a little bit of side information for you. If you're gonna look for Game Boy boxes, be prepared to pay more money. It's the same rule for the NES. Unfortunately though, getting these boxes are harder, um, especially to have them complete with all the little goodies inside. Personally, I just love the look of the Game Boy boxes. They're tiny little neat little guys. Go loose if you want to save money, because if you get it loose, you're going to spend a fraction of the cost. And that's one reason I have built up my collection again so fast in this second wave of collecting. 
Something to look out for, there are certain games that might not appear on the list. And I have recently discovered this as I do my research for part three where I talk about the various Game Boy ports that were on the NES or Sega TurboGrafx, I came across a couple games that are not on some list. And this is one of them, Super Breakout. Now there is Super Breakout and Battlezone, an arcade classic. This one is not on some list. At GameValue.com, it has NA, 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 NA for the price. This is not a very expensive game. It's about 10 to $12, we'll say upwards of $12. How much I paid for mine? Now, one thing you might find about Super Breakout, there's plenty of them on the black cards, which are Game Boy Color games. This one doesn't really show up on eBay. I found one, and I would question if it's actually this one and not a black cart version of it. Black cart? Mini. Not as much. So that's something to look out for, that there are certain games out there that you might find their Game Boy Color version, like I'll show you another one. Finding Frogger is a little bit more harder to find as well on the Game Boy versus as Game Boy Color version. You do find it more than, let's say, Super Breakout. Frogger, you're gonna have a harder time to get. Well, let's do a refresher course how to play Game Boy games. If you want to play the original Game Boy games and want to stick to the Nintendo side of things, you can always play the original 1989 Game Boy or the Play It Loud series, which is the same model, just different colors. These, like the original, only play the black and white Game Boy games, or the black cartridge Game Boy Color games. The Game Boy Pocket, which is just a redesigned Game Boy with a slimmer body and improvements like a bigger, better screen, is in all purposes a black and white Game Boy. It does what the original could, but better. It hit the shelves in 1996. Or you could use a Game Boy Color, released in 1998. It's backwards compatible. It plays the entire original library in its own Game Boy Color games. There's also the Game Boy Advance, released in 2001. It plays all Game Boy, Game Boy Color titles in its own set of games called Game Boy Advance or GBA. The Game Boy Advance had an improved model Game Boy Advance SP. It was released in 2004. It's more compact. Some models have improved lighting capabilities and plays all the games the previous models could. The Game Boy Micro, released in 2005, it sadly doesn't play original Game Boy or Game Boy Color games. It only plays Game Boy Advance titles. The Nintendo DS was available for retail in 2004. It could play GBA games, but doesn't play original or color titles. A few redesigns later, that too would change, and the family line will lose the ability to play Game Boy titles entirely. The Super Nintendo could play Game Boy titles by using a Super Game Boy. Released in 1994, it allows you to play your Game Boy games on a TV. Just original and those black cartridge Game Boy Color games. In 2003, the Nintendo GameCube would get a Game Boy Player attachment. This attachment would make your Nintendo GameCube into a Game Boy Advance. It could play original, color, and Game Boy Advance titles. That's really it for the Nintendo ways to play the physical Game Boy games. There are some newer systems out there that can play Game Boy games, like certain Retron systems. There are others in the works too, so keep your eyes out. the weirdness that's on the Game Boy. There's just some really weird stuff on the Game Boy. Stuff that shouldn't be on there. I showed you Mortal Kombat 2 earlier. If you watched my video game swap me video, you know I picked up Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. But games like this should not exist on the Game Boy, a fighting game like this. And surprisingly, Mortal Kombat 2 is decent, actually. Mortal Kombat 1's not as good, but Mortal Kombat 2 is decent on the Game Boy. Tetris Attack was released on the Super Nintendo. There's also a Game Boy version, which is pretty neat when you think about it. And there's other really weird ports on the Game Boy. And we'll talk about that more in a future video, but look out for that. The ports that are on like the Super Nintendo, there's a port on the Game Boy, an 8-bit system. You know, speaking of weird, a game like Laszlo's Leap. Laszlo's Leap. It's a very strange, checker-like puzzle game released in 1992. You try to move your piece around to eliminate all the checkers and go to a little star. Then you can go on to the next level. You can actually skip the levels as well. There's over a hundred puzzles in this game. And some of them are mind-boggling. It's very uncommon though. 
and it's tricky to find. And the price can reflect that, it can go high as 50 sometimes. It's also a game that's not always on some list. If you're into puzzles, I recommend Laszlo's Leap. It is a mind boggler. Prices. Now I have to kind of contradict something I said in a video that I shot many, many years ago about the Game Boy. I haven't released it yet because I've been wanting to do part three for a while. And that's when you look at some of the other videos, this space has changed because it was shot like in 2016, 2017. I'm still using that video for ins and outs and in-betweens because they still work and that was how it was planned. But I might have to reshoot this because what I said... What's great about collecting now for the Game Boy, most of the games are cheap, $3 and under. There are plenty of Game Boy games under $5. Unfortunately, there's games that go way past that. Like Mega Man 5. One of my favorite Game Boy games. This is the quintessential Mega Man game to get on the Game Boy. It's expensive, but it's worth it. It's a fun game. Well, worth its relative, I guess. But if you're going to spend the money on an expensive game on the Game Boy, or it's not $200, it's sometimes over $100, you can't go wrong with Mega Man 5. And that's the sad thing about Game Boy collecting. It's gotten expensive. Because these guys, no matter what, are harder to find than, let's say, an NES game. They're tiny little guys, and they're easily lost. <laughs> it's gone and that's what happened to a lot of these some some of them got lost some of them just got misplaced or damaged unfortunately that means there's less of them that means they're harder to find not that there's not you know a couple thousand of them out there probably or you know millions on some of these games but some of the more harder uncommon rare ones they're expensive so if you look out for let's say an expensive game like Mega Man 5 Go ahead and get it, if you can find it for a good price. You have to watch out for prices. And I'll show you a couple more that are kind of, ooh, on the expensive side. Kid Dracula, Tailgater, Avenging Spirit. These games cost a pretty penny, but there's much more, which I'll get to another time. I actually bought this when it was relatively new, and I traded it into GameStop and I was getting other stuff, and I regret that because, man, it's a great game. I'm going to get to Mega Man 5 in part 3. I'm not going to talk too much about it right now. One I'm going to talk about on the Game Boy series, hopefully one day, would be Metal Masters. It's a fighting game. Yeah, it's a robot fighting game, Metal Masters. And it's a game that honestly is pretty expensive-ish for Game Boy. At one time, most of these games were a couple dollars. People weren't collecting this. Well, Game Boy collecting has grown. That's one thing you have to look out for too, is that it's a growing little hobby. People are starting to realize, I have most of this stuff for the NES. I can find this stuff relatively easy, but how come I'm not bumping into Game Boy? And that's something that I've found myself where I don't bump into a lot of Game Boy games. I go to one store locally, who has a decent little stack of them. And their prices aren't bad. I'm talking about Retro Game Trader. I got a couple today, including that Super Breakout. But that's it. These games are expensive now. Um, you know, to get a whole set for Game Boy, it's about $8,000 to get a whole loose set. That's not a lot when you're getting a loose NES set. It's like, I think, 18 or 19 or 20,000. I, I gotta look it up. But for the Game Boy, it's still the harder to find. Have the money for it, you might not be able to find the games because there's certain carts you don't find very often in eBay either. I'm talking a little bit more about this in part three, but let's say you're collecting for the NES, but you also collect for the Game Boy, and you find yourself in a little pickle when there's certain games that are fairly expensive. They cost several hundred dollars. Let's say a game like Bubble Bobble 2. Well, you can get the alternative. You can get the little version on the Game Boy. It's a fraction of the cost. We're going to talk a little bit on Game Boy Color. I don't talk a whole lot about that because I don't really collect Game Boy Color, just the original Game Boy, but I have some. And this is probably my most expensive Game Boy Color game, Resident Evil Gaiden. It's extremely uncommon. 
You don't find it very often. Not very many of these, I think, were sold. People played it like this was Resident Evil on the Game Boy Color. I'll pass. It's a weird oddity. Even Game Boy Color has weird oddities like the original Game Boy. It's the same family line. Be on the lookout for less common Game Boy Color games during hunting as well for the original Game Boy. You can use them for trade, sell, or keep them for yourself. It is tricky though, because there's over 600 titles for the Game Boy Color, and that does not include original Game Boy games. This is basic collecting 101, but have a list. I get a game and I will highlight it yellow. I go through the ones that are not highlighted yellow are the ones that I need. Now there are apps and I use apps. I used to have one for the Game Boy, but I can't find that one. It's my old one of my older Android phones. And I had one for the iPhone as well, but I can't find them. Have a list, uh, make sure that you are, are marking it as much as you can because you don't want to double tap your budget. You don't want to buy the same game twice. I've done it several times. This is actually um, a list I got, I think, for game value. And I don't 100% agree with the values on some of these. Some of them I do, some of them I don't. But at least it's a good record. You can go through and go, oh, okay, uh, let's say, for example, Wizard and Warriors X is 547 loose. Or let's say uh, WCW, the main event, 1389. You know, something like that. So you look at the price and you can compare. It'll help you shop online, but also help you shop in the store. So there's some things to look out for. Look out for boxes. Look out for the games themselves. Watch out for prices. Prices have definitely changed the game for big Game Boy collecting. So when you're out there hunting and you want to get for the Game Boy, I hope you're a little bit more prepared. Thank you so much for watching. Have fun. Go game. See you later.